Hello and welcome back children. Hope you're doing good. Now, we are, uh, we have already done the concept of calls in arrears and calls in advance. Now in this sum, we are going to learn one more new thing, which is interest on calls in arrears and calls in advance. Okay. Now what is this concept of interest? Why should the company either pay or receive interest? Okay. First thing, if the company has asked a shareholder to pay some money, and the shareholder does not pay. He takes some extra time, you know, in comparison to the other shareholder. Other shareholders have already paid. He has not paid. So the company is losing out on that ground. Therefore, a company can charge interest on calls in arrears. So whatever amount is due to be paid by the shareholder, the company will charge interest at a specified rate. Okay? And that too, for that period of time for which he has not made the payment. Okay? As a name here, keep pure salver ka interest let's say. If at all, the shareholder pays after one month, to ek mahine ka interest charge kare. If he pays after two months, two months interest, something like that. Okay? Now, the companies can, uh, will also have to pay calls in advance. Interest on calls in advance. Because, some shareholders have paid you in advance as compared to other shareholders, you know. The company has not called for that money, still that shareholder has paid that amount. So obviously, if that is extra hai, company ke paas hai, the shareholder should get some benefit out of it, okay. So the shareholder is allowed interest on calls in advance, clear? Interest on calls in arrears is an income for the company because it will collect it from the shareholders. And interest on calls in advance is an expense for the company because wo pay karna padega shareholders. Here, now we take this sum, uh, just have a look at the sum and then we come to the solution. Alright children, now this is the sum, have a close look at it and take a screenshot and then we move on to the solution. So this given sum is of Chandra Limited where it has been said there are four installments to be paid. Application, allotment, first call and final call. How much was due on application? The shares are being issued at par. Application, at the time of application the shareholder is supposed to pay 2.5 rupees, okay, 2 and a half rupees. 40,000 shares have been issued. So bank account we have received the entire amount of 40,000 shares into 2.5. That comes to 1 lakh rupees. Bank account debit 1 lakh to equity share application account. This amount we will transfer to share capital as usual. Equity share application account debit to equity share capital account. Okay. So this 1 lakh has been transferred to share capital. Next installment due was allotment. So allotment mein kitna paisa hai? 40,000 shares pe 2 rupees ka kere hai. Right? So equity share allotment 40,000 into 2 that is 80,000 is due and that amount I have credited to share capital. Clear? So share capital is credited with 80,000. Okay, are you? Now, this amount is being received now and there is no calls in advance or calls in arrears at the time of allotment. So allotment may be straight and jitna due ta utna paisa mil gaya. Correct? So bank account debit to equally share allotment account. 80,000. Okay. Then, now coming to equity share first call. Two and a half rupees again due. So I make the entry due. Due entry for this uh, installment. Equity share first call account debit 40,000 shares into two and a half per share. One lakh rupees. To equity share capital. Due ki entry ka time mein kuch nahi. Earlier or the advanced adjustment kap kar hai, jab paisa milta hai. When we receive that money in the next entry. Now, bank account will be debited because you will be receiving the call money. But, there are calls in arrears on certain 300 shares. Okay, of Nanesh. So, 300 shares pe paisa nahi milta hai. Right? So, obviously, that amount I cannot debit to bank account. I will debit to calls in arrears. Because this is the amount we have called for but we have not received. So how much is that? 300 shares pay 
टू एंड हाफ रुपीज फर्स्ट कॉल नहीं मिला है दैट कम्स टू सेवन फिफ्टी रुपीज सो डेबिट कॉल इन अर्स विद सेवन फिफ्टी रुपीज हो गया कॉल्स इन अर्स Don't get confused or muddled up whenever there are both calls in arrears and advances. So okay. deal it with one, deal it one at a time. Then to equally share first call. ये तो कोई दिक्कत ही नहीं है इसमें. इसमें तो पूरा पैसा जितना due था उतना credit कर देना है. And there are one lakh goes to equally share first call because we need to close that account, right? Then this one lakh is here. This is done. Then there is one shareholder who has paid us. Calls in advance, but the final call we pay got here first all the time. Correct. So now that amount we have received. So how many shares did he hold? Eight hundred shares. Uska eight hundred shares pay he has paid me final call which is advance. Please be careful here. I multiply with final call amount because that is what I have received in advance. Eight hundred into three rupees, which is twenty four hundred. Please do not multiply here with first call amount. फर्स्ट कॉल एडवांस में नहीं मिल रहा फाइनल कॉल एडवांस में मिल रहा सो फाइनल कॉल का इंस्टॉलमेंट से मल्टीप्लाई करो नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स ओके सो 800 रुपीस इनटू 3 कम्स टू 2400 दिस इज व्हाट आई रिसीव इन एडवांस द लायबिलिटी फॉर मी क्रेडिटेड क्रेडिट ऑन लायबिलिटीज सो टू कॉल्स इन एडवांस 24 दिस अमाउंट आई हैव गॉट दिस अमाउंट आई हैव गॉट एंड कॉल्स इन अर्स अमाउंट आई हैव गॉट हाउ डू आई फाइंड आउट माय बैंक फिगर बैंक फिगर कम्स एज कितना मिलना चाहिए था दैट इज वन लाख रुपीज माइनस कॉल्स इन अर्स बिकॉज आई हैव नॉट रिसीव दैट अमाउंट राइट आई हैव नॉट रिसीव आउट ऑफ वन लैक एंड इन शुड ऑफ दैट आई हैव रिसीव टू थाउजेंड फोर हंड्रेड सो आई एड टू थाउजेंड फोर हंड्रेड टू इट बिकॉज दिस इज ओवर एंड अब वन लैक आई वॉज एक्सपेक्टिंग इज इट सो ये अमाउंट यहां आ जाएगा अगर दस दी बैलेंसिंग फिगर डेबिट क्रेडिट साइड माइनस डेबिट साइड So one lakh one thousand six fifty. ठीक है इतना पैसा मुझे first call के time मिल गया. Done with that. Now we will make the final call due. Due कितना last three rupees है forty thousand into three one lakh twenty thousand is due. So equity share final call account है बेटू equity share capital. Due हो गया. Now पैसे मिलने के time में क्या हो रहा है? It has been said in the sum that the calls and arrears meaning the amount due on the first call. Okay, on these three hundred shares, that also we have received along with final call amount. Good enough. So I will receive not only the final call amount due, but also this seven fifty that I was supposed to receive from that shareholder during the first call. ठीक है? तो ये जो pending पैसा है, वो भी अभी मिल जा रहा है. ठीक है? तो वो भी add कर देंगे हम लोग. So now bank account will be debited and calls in advance. यहाँ पे जो calls in advance हुआ था. Now is it still calls in advance? No. Up to final call go gaya. That means everyone is supposed to pay. Therefore, it is no more calls in advance. So no more liability. Liability जब कम होता क्या करते? Debit कर देते, right? So debit calls in advance twenty four hundred calls in advance clear. Now calls in arrears we have debited. Now when we receive calls in arrears, what do we do? We credit it because a more due नहीं है. So two calls in arrears seven fifty. Done that? Of course, equity share final call will be credited with the entire amount of one lakh twenty because that is what I am supposed to receive, right? So here one lakh twenty receive करना था, receive करके, but I will not receive this calls in advance which I have already received here. ये twenty four hundred यहाँ already मिल चुका है. So out of this one lakh twenty thousand that I was supposed to receive, I will not receive calls in advance. But I will receive calls in arrears from the previous installment. So yes, seven fifty ha add will jaega. All right. So now we are getting one lakh eighteen thousand three fifty. That's how we debit bank with that amount. I hope that is clear. Coming to interest calculation, as I told you, now articles of association of a company. आर्टिकल्स मतलब बाय लॉज होते हैं छोटे मोटे थिंग्स डे टू डे ऑपरेशंस का रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशंस जो हमें मेंटेन किया जाता है यू ऑल नो यू डन दैट इन कॉमर्स ऑलरेडी मेमोरेंडम ऑफ एसोसिएशन आर्टिकल्स ऑफ एसोसिएशन इफ द आर्टिकल्स ऑफ एसोसिएशन हैव क्लियरली मेंशन द रेट एट व्हिच द इंटरेस्ट ऑन कॉल्स इन अरियर्स आर टू बी चार्ज और इंटरेस्ट ऑन कॉल्स इन एडवांस इज टू बी गिवन तो वो रेट पे हम लोग इंटरेस्ट चार्ज करेंगे या फिर अलाउ करेंगे बट इफ एट ऑल The rate is not given. Then 
we have one more option the table f of schedule 1 of the companies act somewhere diya hua hai applicable for interest on poison arrears and poison advance it is mentioned clearly there that if the articles it does not mention the rate of interest this can be applied so what does this table f tell us of schedule 1 of companies act 2013 table f says interest on calls in arrears can be charged at 10% per annum Whereas, interest on calls in advance will have to be paid at the rate of 12% per annum and that's fixed, okay? Earlier it was lesser but now with the revision made 10% and 12% earlier's advance. Thick. So now, how do we calculate interest on calls in advance? How much is the amount of the advance? 2400. It has been given in the sum that first call or final call ke beech mein 3 months ka gap hai. Right? So, when first call we gave and the shareholder has advanced payment, so how many months have you advanced? 3 months. Because 3 months after the first call, final call is anyways due. Right? So, 3 months interest we should get. Therefore, 2400 into 12%, 12% I am coming getting from table F. 12% is after 3 by 12, meaning 3 months out of 12 months. Right? So this is how I get 72 rupees as interest of calls in advance. Okay? Yeh mujhe shareholders ko dena hoga because he has paid me in advance. Hear about this? So this is the rate 12% per annum mentioned in table F of schedule 1 and we give them only for 3 months not for the whole year. 12% per annum on the pure saal ka 12% hai. Here? Similarly, interest of calls in arrears will be charged at 10% per annum. Calls in arrears ka amount kya tha? 750. So 750 pe 10% again for 3 months. Because this shareholder has paid his arrears along with final call. So 3 mahine baad pay kar diya no? So 3 months ka charge, interest charge kare. Right? Now it is not coming to a whole number. 18.75 we can round it off to the next or closest uh, whole number which is 19 rupees. So we will charge 19 rupees as call interest on calls and others. Okay? Now let us come to the journal entries. Journal mein pehle interest due karne ka an entry hota hai. Because we have to either give to the members. Sundry members matlab kya hota hai? The shareholders. We do not have to name the shareholders. Ek ek shareholder ke account pe, name pe account nahi khulta hai. Okay? So we charge or allow interest at sundry, sundry members ke account pe. Okay? So now... That entry is first thing for interest on calls in advance. I told you interest on calls in advance you have to pay. It's an expense. Debit all expenses and losses. Interest on calls in advance debit. Itna tha? 72. Two sundry members. Because the interest is ko dena hai? Sundry members ko dena hai? So credit them with this amount. Okay. Once we have credited them. Now this is the due entry. Interest due. Okay. Now this is the entry when we pay the interest on calls in advance. So pay kare ne to obviously bank se paisa jai ga. Kis ko pay kare? Sundry members ko. So they, they, they are receiving the amount. So sundry members account is debited. And I am crediting bank 72 rupees. Okay. This is the entry for payment of interest on calls and advance. Here view and pay. Same thing we do for interest on calls and arrears. Calls and arrears again is an income for me. I will have to charge from sundry members to debit sundry members because they are going to pay me, they are debtors to me. Two, interest on calls and others. 19 rupees is my income. Right? Then, when I receive it from them, of course, bank my paisa I have, the bank account debit, 19 rupees. Two sundry members, they have paid me, so they are no more liable to pay me. So, unko credit credit, so unko account close credit. Okay? So, these are the entries for making the interest due and payment entries or receipt entries. Also, all incomes and expenses will have to be closed at the end of the year, you know, by transferring to statement of profit and loss. Right? Why have you done final accounts? Now, since interest of calls in advance is an expense, debit statement of PL, debit sign by other statement of PL, to interest on calls in advance. So, I have closed interest on calls in advance account by transferring to statement of PL. This is the closing entry for interest on calls in advance. Now why am I stressing on which entries for what? Due, payment, receipt, closing entry. 
बिकॉज इफ काउंसिल जॉइनल एंट्री स्टैंड अलोन एंट्री एक थ्योरी में भी आ सकता है क्वेश्चन गिव द क्लोजिंग एंट्री फॉर इंटरेस्ट ऑन कॉल्स एंड एडवांस तो तुम क्या करोगे क्लोजिंग एंट्री ये एंट्री दो ये एंट्री दो नहीं ये गलत है बिकॉज इज नॉट अ क्लोजिंग एंट्री क्लोजिंग एंट्री इज वेन यू ट्रांसफर इन टू द स्टेटमेंट ऑफ प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस राइट स्टेटमेंट ऑफ प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस डेबिट टू इंटरेस्ट ऑन कॉल्स इन अवियर एडवांस क्लोज इंटरेस्ट ऑन कॉल्स इन अवियर डेबिट बिकॉज इन इनकम लॉस सो क्रेडिट साइड में अगर स्टेटमेंट ऑफ पी एल सो टू स्टेटमेंट ऑफ पी एल अकाउंट नाइन You have credited statement of PL, debited interest on bonds and earnings. Okay, so I hope this is clear. These entries are not asked for and will not be asked separately in the sum. You will have to pass these entries and marks will be allotted for this. Alright. So interest on bonds and earnings or advance me, हमेशा ये sequence रहेगा due करना है payment. ठीक है? Okay, advance का. और due करना है earnings and you will receive the amount of interest on bonds and earnings. Then close it by transferring to statement of PL. Okay, so this will be the sequence. You have to show the working. How to have got the seventy two and nineteen? Small little step marks will fetch you full marks in the sum. Okay, I hope you understood interest on calls and arrears. Please practice more sums. It's pretty easy. Just keep in mind that how many period के लिए interest देना है. Those number of months only the interest should be charged or allowed. Okay, all right. So that brings us to the end of this topic. And keep watching my videos. Please do like and subscribe. And please check my description box below for the links related to this chapter. We have done a lot of sums earlier also, and the introduction. Thank you so much for watching.